إن الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعين به ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله تعالى به الغمة تركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كان هارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك فاللهم جزه عنا خير ما جزيت نبيا عن أمته ورسولا عن دعوته ورسالته وارض اللهم عن آل بيته وصحابته ومن استن بسنته واقتفى أثره إلى يوم الدين سبحانك ربنا لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم إنا نسألك أن تفتح للحق قلوبنا وأن تنير به بصائرنا وأن تجنبنا الشرك والرياء والنفاق وأن تجعلنا من المخلصين الراشدين ربنا نسألك الإخلاص في القول والعمل ونسألك يا أرحم الراحمين القبول الحسن اللهم يا ربنا لك الحمد أن وفقتنا لصيام رمضان وقيامه لك الحمد أن رزقتنا رمضان اللهم تقبل منا الصيام والصلاة والقيام اللهم تقبل منا صالح الأعمال إنك يا مولانا على كل شيء قدير يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد أحبتي في الله After thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for helping and supporting us to observe fasting of the blessed month of Ramadan and reminding ourselves with taqwa Allah azza wa jal taqwa Allah to be God conscious to be mindful of your Lord which is the best fruit a believer could come out with it from Ramadan Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala alladhina min qabilikum la'allakum tattakun The land of ta'ah, obedience was very fertile very so paved so suitable for obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Ramadan because the shayateen were chained, locked, jailed and you, you remember how was your heart in Ramadan and how the whispers and the whispers started to come back after Ramadan once the sun sets the sun of the last day of Ramadan sets, the shayateen are released and they want to make up what they missed. And this is the topic of the khutbah today, inshallah ta'ala, to know about some of the traps of the shayateen with which they target the righteous after Ramadan. And it's targeted, the righteous ones. Because he doesn't care about the one who didn't fast, the one who doesn't pray, because he doesn't have to exert some shaitani efforts with him. He's already automated for the shaitani manner. But he's targeting those who spend their nights praying and their days fasting, guarding their sights, 
guarding their tongues after the Ramadan, they would be rushing to them to do as much as they can to take them back from the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that happens from the first night of the Eid, even before the Eid starts, before Salatul Eid, targeting them with many traps. The first one is at the sweep, procrastination. Those brothers who were able to come to the masjid, praying in jama'ah, crying when they listened to Quran, they were praying while they had the intention after Ramadan, inshallah, I'll never leave Salatul Jama'ah. After he enjoyed the recitation of Quran and he started to understand the meanings, he decided after Ramadan, I'm not going to leave reciting daily portion of Quran. When he tasted the sweetness of his sadaqa, he decided not to leave sadaqa after Ramadan. He decided, he planned to fast after Ramadan. Not only six days of Shawwal, but Mondays and Thursdays, three days from each month. They were all the plans. Why? Because the land is ready to plant. The shayateen were not there at that time he planned. He had many plans. But once Ramadan ends and he plans to go back to Qiyam al -Layl, the shaitan comes to him. He doesn't say to him, leave Qiyam al -Layl. No, he just tells him, you know what? You did enough in Ramadan. Just take a break. Only tonight. You used to recite three Jews a day. You know what? Try to make it one Jews in order not to be boring for you. Let's start today. No, no, take a day off today. Today is Eid. Enjoy some time with your kids, your family. Man, you did a lot. Take some break. This is Sunnah. The Shaitan says this is Sunnah to him now. <laughs> then he keeps targeting every ta'ah he wants to make. Qiyamul Layl, take a break. Quran, not, not today. You want to make one juice a day? Okay, make two tomorrow. Then comes tomorrow, nothing tomorrow. After tomorrow, we then a month, then the entire year passes while he's still having some plans. But he doesn't take an action. This is the shaytani procrastination. That's why Abdullah ibn Abbas, he wanted to remind his people and said, oh, sawfa. I warn you against the word I will. I will. One of the contemporary speakers, he said, don't be amongst those people who live in one day I'll. One day I'll. One day I'll be good husband. One day I'll send my kids to the Quran classes. One day I'll start praying in Jama'ah. One day I'll start memorizing Quran. One day I'll give regular tzadaqah a day. One day I'll, I'll, I'll. This is all from the shaitan. Don't live on that aisle. If you plan to do something, do it from now. Because once the shaitan defeats you in the first round, the coming rounds will be easier. Whether it's related to your Quran, or related to your salah, or extra voluntary prayers, why the shaitan targets the, the, the night prayers and the Quran? Because those are the best. The one whose night is healthy, his day will be the same. If Allah guides you to be worshiper during the night, you will be worshiper during the day. If your night was disobedient one, your day is expected to be the same. So if you want to guard the day, just fortify it from the night. Same thing for Quran. That enhances the faith inside the heart. The shaitan doesn't want you to recite Quran. Because this is the tool of tasbeet, keeping faith firm, steadfast in your heart. When you recite Quran and read the meaning of the Quran, that would enhance faith in your heart. The shaitan doesn't want that. He will not come and say, no, abandon Quran. No, he says, try to do some dhikr first. Like a thousand istighfar, a thousand tasbih. He keeps you busy with dhikr while Quran is the best type of dhikr. 
So this is the tool or the trap number one the shaitan uses against the worshippers. What about those who didn't worship the right way in Ramadan? And he regrets that he didn't get a chance to pray Qiyam or to get Laylatul Qad. The shaitan tells him, don't worry. Lots of Ramadans are coming. If you couldn't make it this Ramadan, you can make it inshallah next Ramadan. The shaitan doesn't say inshallah by the way. But he would fill his heart with hopes and living more years, if not this year to be next one. <coughs> and you'll be forgiven. You are one of you from awliyaullah and keeps whispering to him until he relaxes with what he did. So that was the first trap for the shaitan after Ramadan for the worshippers, procrastination. Rather than that, it would be better for a servant to attack the whispers of the shaitan. Yes, I have a plan for next Ramadan. But to start preparing for next Ramadan, I have to start from the day of Eid. If I feel I lost, I have to start from the day of Eid. Why didn't I recite Quran by heart? Because I don't memorize enough from Quran. Start memorizing from now. From now until next Ramadan, minimum seven Jews you can memorize by heart, you can recite the entire seven Jews in Ramadan, next Ramadan. Why didn't you give sadaqat? Because you don't have enough. Start working in halal jobs from now to save something to give sadaqat next Ramadan. Praying in the masjid. Try training yourself from now. Praying, praying in the masjid. Don't wait until next Ramadan. Start training yourself from now. Once Ramadan comes, it will be your gift. You are there. You can make it. So preparation for Ramadan is not in Rajab or Shaban. It must be from now. Even if you pass those eight days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and today, eight days passed after Ramadan. Even if we did nothing until now, we have to start. Take an action right away, you got the idea. Ramadan before I remember, and many of you of you may remember, some of our brothers here from the masjid, they didn't rise from the Quran that much. But they promised in front of all of you to memorize the entire Quran. Some of them finished two-thirds of the Quran during that past year. Alhamdulillah. Some of them finished the half of the Quran. Some of them are about to finish the entire Quran now. Some of them finished seven Jews, three Jews, four Jews. Some of them finished Surah Al-Baqarah. But they did something during the year that helped them in this Ramadan. May Allah accept it from us and all of them, Ya Rabbul Alameen. This is the sincere intention. Plan for Ramadan from this Ramadan, from this Shawwal. And if you have sincere intention, whatever you have in your heart, Allah will make it easy for you. So avoid the first trap, which is procrastination, postponing the good deeds. The second trap of the shaitan, he causes you to forget about thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who made you able to fast? Who made you defeat your stingy soul or ego? to give sadaqah, who made you stand for prayer for those hours, who made it for you, it's Allah. وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ Whatever grace you have, it's only from Allah. So do not think that this is, it was me. Like Qarun, he said, إِنَّمَا أُتِيتُهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ عِنْدِي No, it's not yours. It's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You should Thank Allah that He made the ta'a obedience easy for you. You should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He kept the bothering stuff away from you. You didn't have some children sick in Ramadan, then you came to make the salah on time. You didn't have family issues with your wife or your neighbors or your friends that keeps your mind 
away from the Ta'a in Ramadan, who made all of that for you, Allah. Allah made the ibadah, the worship easier for you, so you should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the shaitan keeps causing people to forget about thanking. They don't thank Allah after Ramadan, that he guided them to fast Ramadan, while many people didn't fast. Whether for sickness or troubles or traveling or uh, whatever the reason, they couldn't make it. But you made it. To thank Allah, he, for, he causes them to forget about that, to neglect thanking. Rather than that, he causes them to feel proud of their ta'ah, that they did lots of prayers, they observed fasting, they protected themselves from the sins, and they start boosting it, that we did a lot of things. Until the one of them, when he gets any affliction or any hardship after Ramadan, he says, he complains to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about one of those people who was a worshiper. But when came the time of death, he said to Allah, you have grilled me over the afflictions, those hardships and the hard times that if you give me al firdaus would not be enough for me. Who tells that? That word leads to kuf. Don't expect a reward for your deeds. Because simply, we are slaves of Allah. When someone buys a slave in the time of slavery, when he pays money and buys him for 10,000 or 20,000, then he brings him home to serve him, to clean the house, to cook the food, to do everything from him. Is the slave expected to wait for wages or fees? To be paid or any compensation paid to him? Or should not? We are slaves for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if he doesn't give us any reward, we don't deserve it. But because he is the all merciful, he rewards us. So that person, he's negotiating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the afflictions or whatever happened to him. It's all test from Allah to test your iman, your faith, whether you were doing that with sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or just hiding some hypocrisy inside the heart. <coughs> so this is the second the trap to forget about for thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be thankful servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then comes the third trap for the shaitan. If he follows his usual six traps and he couldn't get you in one of them because the shaitan has like strategy for misleading the children of Adam. He has like six traps as Ibn al-Qayyim mentioned. The first one, he wants you to fall in a shirk al-akbar, the major shirk, to be kafir, purely kufr. The second one, the minor shirk. The third one, the major sins. If he couldn't do all of them, he will target you with the minor sins. If he couldn't, and you're working the hard on your heart and yourself to obey Allah, he will trap you in other types of sins which are the makruhat. The things that just transform then he would make you busy with things that are not that important to neglect the important ones. But what if he couldn't reach you from all of these ways? He uses his agents from the human to keep you busy from the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wants you to be shirki, shirki, asghar, uh, major sins, minor sins. He tried all of them, didn't work with you. Then he, won't, he will go to his shaitani agents from the humans to make you busy from the ibadah. You couldn't worship anymore, you couldn't recite the Quran anymore. This evil person could be a friend who gives you something haram to watch or guides you to haram business to start. He's shaitan as well. Or a neighbor who is complaining you all the time or giving you a hard time or family issues with your kids or your wife. 
he keeps you busy anyway while he's using his agents from the humans to take you back from the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why you see many of the family issues happening in these two months, Sha'ban and Shawwal. The troubles with the wives, with the kids, fighting with them, Sha'ban and Shawwal, most of them. Yes, it happens. Any house expected to have some troubles and issues inside, but in Sha'ban, the most. Why? He wants to keep his mind busy in Ramadan when he worships, he is not focused in his prayers. And after Ramadan, you might have heard about some husband who slapped their wives in the night of Eid. Okay? How to lock the door in front of the shaitan by doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded you to do with your family. Live with them in a good man. And regarding the women, Rasulullah asked asking the lady, you have a husband? She said, yes. He said, look, what's your position for him? He is your Jannah. And he is your fire. What do you do with him? You're good to him or bad? That's why we see all of the troubles happening before Ramadan and after Ramadan. The shayateen want to make like saving their efforts that they worked all over the year. You want him busy away from Ibadah in Ramadan and forgetting the Ibadah after Ramadan. How to handle that? Lock the door in front of the shaitan. غلق عليه مداخلة غلق عليه مداخلة This is the easiest way. When you feel that you are angry, leave the place. Make wudu. Make istighfar. Try to be thankful to your partner, whether a husband or wife. Try to thank her for what she did for you in Ramadan. Okay? This is the way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded us to do a poor mass. Ma'una astaghfirullah wa alaykum astaghfirullah. Alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salamun ala ibadihi alladhi nastafa thumma amma ba'd. As we mentioned before, one of the best fortifications or protections for these family issues to recite Surah Al-Baqarah. In your house that will protect and keep the whispers of the shayateen away then we come to the other trap of the shaytan after ramadan which is the tongue the tongue could lead to jannah and could lead to the fire the heart will not be on the straight path until the tongue is on the straight path. As in the hadith, لا يستقيم إيمان عبد حتى يستقيم قلبه The faith of a servant will not go straight until his heart is straight. And his heart will not go straight until his tongue goes straight. So try fixing it. What you say, what you listen, how many times you backbite, how many times we backbite, how many times we listen to ill speech, how many times we hear others abusing other brothers, and we keep silent, we don't say, we don't stop them. How many times we ourselves say abusive words, bad words, while Allah commanded us to say, say good things to others. Always. Muslim or non-Muslim. Like a man asked Ibn Abbas, when a non-believer gives me a favor, or he says to me, Barakallah, what should I say to him? He said, even if it's a Fir'aun, says to me, Barakallah, I would say it to him, wa fika Barakallah. Even if it's a Fir'aun, yes. to say du'a for them, to do favor to them from the same time he has done for you. So measure your words. Whatever you say, is it hasanat or sayyat? If it's sayyat, stop. If it's a hasanat, if there is another speech with more hasanat, say it. It's very important to be vigilant to this very important trap of the shaitan. The Prophet says to Mu'ad, what else drags people on the fire except the harvest of their tongues? Whatever we say, it's painful. Sometimes more painful than swords. So guard your tongue for the sake of Allah. 
Another trap of the shaitan that becomes so active after Ramadan, the vision, looking the eyes, looking at haram, and summertime is coming, and the haram start to show up. So the only fortification for ourselves to guard our eyes. The easiest way to lock them. In less than a second, you can lock it many times. Whenever you see haram, guard your eye. Because this is the most dangerous window for the heart is the eye. When you recite the Quran, نظر بعضهم إلى بعض هل يراكم من أحد ثم انصرف صرف الله قلوبهم. If I had a connection between the sight and the hearts, when the sight deviated, Allah deviated their hearts. Very swift effect for what you see affects your heart. So guard your heart, guard your eye from now. الحمد لله was easier in Ramadan. So just do some struggle against your desires. After Ramadan, to guard your heart all the years. Ramadan is a charging station from which you charge up your spirituality to help you revive faithful all the year. We need to ask ourselves, in those eight days past after Ramadan, what did you watch? What did you see? Ask ourselves. The eight days passed. How many pages of Quran we recited? How many voluntary rakaat, sunnah, or qiyam we prayed? Even the wit, are we still praying it? How many times we sit? To, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dhikr as we did in Ramadan. <clears throat> Answering those questions will be like a compass that tells you whether you are in the right direction, the right path, or you start to deviate. If you recognize that we deviated even a little bit, Still, it's not too late. Get back to the right way. Try to recall what you did in the Ramadan and act according to it. Yes, we couldn't make as much as we did in Ramadan or not everyone. It's not easy to do the same like we have done in Ramadan, but do some of it. Even a little bit. Rasulullah said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ahabu al ila Allah, The most beloved with this to Allah that you do continuously, even if it's a little bit. So the final advice from this khutbah that I want to give to myself and our respected brothers and sisters, please, غَلِّقْ عَلَيْهِ مَدَاخِلَ Lock the doors in front of the shaitan. You lived a month without shaitan. You lived Ramadan shaitanless and you filled it. Then once Ramadan passed, you start to have those thoughts. You want to do things never came to your mind in Ramadan. Remember, this is one of the doors trying to open. Lock it. Another thought, lock it. If it's a place, whenever you go to it, you remember this thing. Don't go to this place. If it's a topic, Whenever you talk about it, you plan to do this sin. Close this topic. Don't continue talking about it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advice. Qul amantu billahi thumma istaqim. Say I believed in Allah and keep steadfast on the straight path. May Allah guide all of us on the straight path. May Allah guard our hearts and our eyes and our body parts from the sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ta'a after Ramadan, more than the ta'a we did in Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep our hearts on faith and iman until we meet him, ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma inna nas'aluka ya arham ar-rahimina wa ya akram al-akramin an tuslih lana kulubana. Allahumma adim alayna ya'ma ta'a'ati ba'da Ramadan.
وأدم علينا نعمة الإيمان والإسلام حتى نلقاك يا حنان يا منان إنك يا مولانا على كل شيء قدير ربنا لا تدع لنا في هذا اليوم ثمن إلا وفرده ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا لك فيها رضا ولنا فيها خير إلا قضيتها ويسرتها برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى واغفر لنا وارحمنا وتقبل منا إنك يا مولانا على كل شيء قدير وصلي اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وأقم الصلاة